Hey everyone, welcome back to How to Escape. This is Rarina, and today I'm sitting in front of our very well loved and used set of Michelin Premier tires and they are ready for replacement. So I wanted to go over a few things while we have this very worn out tire in front of us before we go replace it. There are a lot of sections here, so feel free to skip ahead to the one that most interests you. So looking at this very loved tire, we're going to go over the different parts of the tire tread and what to tell when your tire is tired, worn out, and ready to be replaced. The safety standards don't exist for no reason. You might think, oh, well, it's not com completely bald. I can wait till later. But let's talk about the purpose of these channels in the first place. So if you are driving on a dry surface, you could have a completely bald tire. Just like Formula One or drag cars, you can have excellent traction with very bald tires and dry driving conditions. The tread is mostly for gripping during various weather conditions, such as rain, snow, anything like that. Because water is non-compressible, it can't just be squished. It needs to be pushed and moved out of the way. So when you're driving, your tires have these treads going down the main lines here to divert it away so that your tire can maintain its contact. Obviously, the lower the treads get, the less water management there is in the tire, and you risk hydroplaning, which is basically water skiing, if your tire can't make contact with the ground and it's spinning and riding on top of a puddle of water. Now that we understand tread, how do we check it? So let's get into our recommended methods for measuring the remaining tire tread. And your most basic tools are going to be the quarter and the penny. So we'll start off with the penny. The minimum recommended tire tread thickness is 2 seconds of an inch, which is about a 16th of an inch, which results in just about the distance between where the light's shining off the top of Abe Lincoln's head here to the top outer edge of the coin. And so if you flip that upside down and push it into your tire treads, if you can see the top of Abe Lincoln's head in any of this, then it's time to replace this tire. If you want to go a little bit more than the bare minimum, a lot of major tire vendors like Tire Rack are now recommending 4 30 seconds of an inch. Other car brands are doing 4 30 seconds of an inch, and that's about an eighth of an inch, which happens to be about the distance between the top of George Washington's head and the outer side of this coin. Not to be lame and unoriginal, but something very common and easy to use. You can use a quarter for the 4 30 seconds of an inch. Check your tire treads there. So obviously, since I'm less than 2 30 seconds, I'm going to be less than 4. And for our international viewers, what if you don't have any U.S. coins? And finally, the ultimate last resort are these wear strips that are molded into your tire treads. So there's a strip here, there's a strip there, there's a strip there. They act like little bridges across the channels here, and what they are, they're visual indicators. When you do not see a little step anymore from your tire tread down to the top flat surface of that wear strip, that is when you are in deep trouble and you are going to run the risk of going bald very soon. So use your penny, use your quarter, look at your wear strip. Okay, now what about snow tires? Do they work on the same tread thickness guidelines? Now, say that you even have snow tires or winter tires, and the tire, by the nature of how it's designed, should be better at gripping in cold weather because of the softer rubber compound. That's all well and good, but again, if you don't have tread, you're not going to get the proper traction and contact to the ground to grip it properly. Always make sure you have the minimal tread present for optimal performance. Now let's pay attention to the sidewall of your tire. The sidewall is the outer face of your tire that does not contact the ground, but it still plays a critical role in maintaining the shape and pressure in your tire. Things to look for in your tire sidewall as signs of defects include cra cracking, dry rotting, splitting, or even bubbling out. Looking at my sidewall here, you can already see, because this tire is old, is some drying out of the outer surface, some cracking, not quite flaking, it's not in terrible shape, but it's got signs of showing its age. This rounded corner here that you're seeing from was when I had low pressure for a while and hadn't realized it, so the tire was rounding out and flattening more than it should have. So that's another sign of wear and another way that the sidewall can have strain put on it if your tire pressure is not maintained properly. So now let's talk about when do you replace a tire versus rotate them. A tire can be rotated, obviously, when it can be moved from one position to another, meaning that it's still usable. Now, the usability consists of what we just discussed. If you have low tread pattern, if you have sidewall damage, if you have a puncture, 
uh, if you have any misalignment causing significant uneven damage or wear. All of these factors may deem your tire unsafe and not fit for a rotation. And a question that seems silly but isn't really is if you have an all-wheel drive escape, do you need to rotate the tires? Whether you have an all-wheel drive or a front-wheel drive car, the front tires are always going to wear faster than the rear tires. Front-wheel drive, obviously, because there's more pull all the time. Even all-wheel drive vehicles, and the display on the dash shows that all four wheels start with the same amount of drive going to them, but then as the vehicle gets up to speed to be more efficient, it directs the drive to the front wheel. So wear is always going to be stronger on the front tires than the back. So you do always need to rotate the tires. The next question is, how often should you rotate your tires? Typical rule of thumb for tire rotation is to do it every time you do an oil change. That's what most people do. What rotation pattern is best for our escapes? You can typically go front to back, back to front. Whether you have a front wheel drive or all wheel drive car, people can argue that all wheel drive vehicles um, do a better tire rotation and an X pattern in moving the back ones forward. And I've always done just front to back or back to front as long as the axles move with each other. And I look at the tread pattern and see if it's even side to side per tire to make sure my alignment is good. Then I can just go front to back, back to front. Now the next common and very real situation is a question of asking, can you replace just one tire across the whole set? Maybe. It depends on how much material is left on the tire on the other side of the car. So after contacting a few shops and the dealer, basically the gist that I got is if it's within the two to four thirty seconds of an inch difference side to side, you should be fine for the long term. If the tire on the opposite side is worn down substantially, you should replace this side and that side to keep the steering even from side to side. Okay, but what about the process of tire shaving? There's a practice called tire shaving, where you shave down your new tire to match the remaining tread thickness on the old tire to keep things even. But I don't, I'm not a huge fan of that idea. I think it's kind of wasteful if you're gonna spend the money on a new tire, you're just shortening its life by shaving it down. Um, a replacement across both tires of the axle is going to be your best long-term choice, even if it costs you a little bit money for an extra tire, as you're gonna benefit from the full lifespan of each of the tires instead of shaving it down. Do I need to have all four tires matching perfectly for all-wheel drive? It's not critical to have all four tires matching diameters in terms of tire tread left, but it is most critical for the all-wheel drive system to have the same or very close to the same tread thickness across the same axle. So again, side to side is more important than front to back or all four. And again, like we're doing today, you can replace all four tires when you've had rotations back and forth over a long span of time and when all tires have low tread and they've just kind of reached the end of their life. Next question is, where can you get good tires? Now, many places sell good tires. I mean, you just need to do your own homework. Michelin, obviously, Bridgestone, those are tried and true brands that have somewhat expensive but very good tires. In terms of places where you can get them for a little bit less, you have your online retailers like Tire Rack and Online Tires. Other vendors that will ship the tires to you or to an install shop, um, it's usually for a little bit of a lower cost, but you'll still have to pay, of course, for mounting and balancing of your wheels. What do I need to look for when just buying two tires? The most important thing for your vehicle and the all-wheel drive is to make sure the same tire exists on both sides of the axle. This would include the same tire brand, the same model, and the same tread thickness between the two wheels between 2 to 4 30 seconds. Now what about going to a used tire shop? Is that typically okay? Used tires are often more affordable and more of a short-term solution. What's critical is to have the availability of two matching tires across your axle. Another perfectly reasonable question is, how do I know which tire is right for my vehicle? In terms of trying to figure out which tire is good for your vehicle, as you can see on the side here of the sidewall, it has the tire classification. It says 235-55-R17. And aside from your owner's manual, you can also look in your driver's door jam where you have this tire loading information, and also above that where the VIN sticker is and the build date and all that. It says 235-55-R17 for the front wheel, 235-55-R17 for the rear wheel, and then T155-70-R17 for the spare. Okay, so we read the sticker, but what do those numbers even mean? So right here is an image pulled from the Costco website when you're trying to find tires for your vehicle. It shows the standard 17 and 18 inch wheel sizes for our escapes. And for the first number, 235 is the width. That's the width of the tire overall and the tread contact on the ground. 
55 is the aspect ratio of the sidewall relative to the tire width. So that's this sidewall is going to be 55% of the width of the tire. R means that it's a radial style tire, how it clings into the rim. And then 17 means that it fits a 17 inch rim. The resultant diameters are going to be the same for the 18 inch, but there's going to be a difference in sidewall and rim size. 70% aspect ratio for sidewall height relative to width. And then again, a 17 inch rim there. And this spare tire is rated to go for 50 miles if you're in an emergency situation, and you're not gonna compromise anything with your all-wheel drive system by having that slight variation in diameter compared to your main wheels here. I did consult a dealer and a few other people about that just to make sure, because there was somebody who asked that question the other day. So I hope that answered a lot of questions about tires and getting ready for winter weather. So if you have any questions or comments or stories of your own in terms of tires, leave them below in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and talk about it. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. And check out our Amazon store for any parts you might need, linked below. And be on the lookout for the Rawrina app. It's in the final stages of development, and we can't wait to tell you about it. Thanks for watching How to Escape. We'll see you next time.